database structure then is the first half of a quite large topic that covers web design and information systems as well and there's quite a lot that you need to know as you can see from here so we'll get started so you may have done databases in earlier years hopefully you've done them this year and the kind of early databases that we certainly would have practiced would have all been flat file databases where everything was entered into one big massive table which is really silly and we'll talk about why later on so we call them flat file databases and what are the things you need to know about flat file databases apart from the fact that they are rubbish well you need to know how to uh, search and sort on them you need to know a lot about the different field types that can be used and you may remember using primary keys in flat file tables as well which are also possible so what the national five courses brought in are these new relational linked tables which have lots of advantages over flat file databases but you may have found yourself spending a lot more time setting up the structure and setting up the relationships between the different tables so one of the first things that you do after you design your tables and you plan out uh, the links between them is decide on your primary and foreign keys now a primary key uniquely identifies a record within a table and a foreign key is what is used to link two tables together and a foreign key simply means that there's a field in a particular table that happens to be a primary key in another table now this creates a link between the two tables for example you may have a unique SQA candidate number and hopefully you all do have a unique SQA candidate number and in some other database that will store all of your grades that SQA candidate number will appear again and instead of typing out all of your information several times which we'll come back to in a second they can simply link the tables together and that link means that your information can be looked up in a separate table We'll cover that in a bit more detail shortly. What else do we need to know? Well, you will be presented with examples of tables and records, and it will show you several fields in the exam. And they may ask you questions like, what would be the most appropriate field type for the following information? So let's go through some of them and we'll compare them to the programming languages that you've hopefully used as well. So text, straightforward, we maybe call that a string in programming and it can hold a combination of letters, numbers, special characters and spaces. So examples of text are street names, addresses, anything that contains letters and numbers, email addresses are text for the special characters as well. Number, obviously we all know different types of number fields from programming. But the number field can be customised to store integers and singles and floats and real numbers. Graphic should be straightforward. It holds an image, but it's not the only way of inserting an image into a table. Objects are another way of inserting graphic objects into a table. But again, this object could be loads of different things. It could be an MP3. It could be um, a graphic file or several other different things. Calculated, we'll come back to in one second. Link is really, again, straightforward. It could be a hyperlink to a website or another file, whatever it happens to be. In Boolean, hopefully, you'll all recognise from programming, again, that stores true or false. So that would be used in a kind of simple manner of whether someone can drive or not. Calculated fields are a little different. Those are fields which contain a formula and they will perform a calculation on the table based on other fields within a record. Validation you'll hopefully recognise as well from programming where you have to ensure that your data is allowable into your program and there's several different types of validation that you need to be aware of and understand that databases make use of so there's 
a few that we need to, to know here, four in total. Presence check, really straightforward. It just checks to make sure that the user has entered data for that field. So for example, signing up for a Facebook account, you would have to enter an email address, you'd have to enter a username, but you may not have to enter a mobile phone number in order to sign up. So the presence check would be on a field that you must enter. A restricted choice field would have the creator of the database set up the only um, pieces of data that they will allow to be entered into that field. And a good example of this is if you ever ordered pizza from Pizza Hut online, they will usually have a drop down box and it will tell you the different sizes of pizza that are available and the different types and toppings. And that's really good because it saves anybody trying to type in uh, any invalid data because they can't because the choices there are limited to them. So it's really good and it speeds up data entry and it's a very good, simple, straightforward validation. validation. Field length is where you would need a specific number of characters entered into a field. For example, a phone number has 11 digits, right? however many digits a phone number requires. You would specify that they must enter this exact number of characters. And a range check is the one we should all be really familiar with because we've had to do it in programming. But a good example of a range check are for the months that of birth it must be between the range of 1 and 12 inclusive. So very straightforward. And again, need to be able to explain all of those, all of those as well as spot them. And the last wee piece, which goes back to the kind of start that we talked about for relational link tables. Flat file databases are terrible for all of these problems. Many tables you may have created throughout the years and uh, in, in kind of younger years at school where you're constantly typing the same information that you've already typed. If you can make a class database in a flat file for your classroom and type in your teacher's details, for every pupil in your class, you'll be typing the exact same details on your teacher, which is really silly and it causes a lot of problems and that's what data duplication is, where you're entering the same data twice. And that also causes a lot of problems when we come back to modify a flat file database, an insertion anomaly. If you had a flat file database and a new teacher starts in the school and the way you've designed it is that you must enter pupil information, well, we're going to have to make up pupil information for this new teacher that comes along. If in this database only one record exists of a teacher, then we get a deletion anomaly where we may delete one record concerning a pupil that's left and then we delete all of this other important information on teachers and that's a deletion anomaly. There's also update anomaly if your teacher had to retrain in a different subject or a new teacher comes in and takes your registration class, well you would think it would make sense to only update it once but not in a flat file database we would have to go through and update every single record that contained that teacher's information. And the great thing about setting up a relational database is it takes away all of these problems. So if we design our relationships between our tables really, really well, and if you come back for higher, you'll see even more about how the relationships are planned and created. You'll see just how important relational link tables are. One part that we haven't touched on here is a kind of practical area where you also have to be able to explain how to sort and search a database. And it's really a bit of practice for that that you need to look at. You need to know the difference between a simple search where you search data in one field and a complex search where you search in two or more fields. You also need to know the difference between sorting in ascending and descending order as well as complex and simple sorting. And it's really uh, a case of looking very carefully at the data and seeing what groupings there are there and answering it very, very carefully uh, and using the, the field names as well as the data that you're going to search on. And it's worth practicing because there's quite a lot of marks come from it, usually three marks for describing how a particular piece of information 
or particular records are found in a database and maybe one or two marks for describing how a complex sort has been carried out in databases. So there's a lot here that you really need to go and practice that's a practical area of the course.